Hey everybody and you're very welcome to this week's podcast Empowering Family Health and today on the show I am really super excited about this uh, this show, this conversation. It's going to be jam-packed and I'm excited already before it's even begun. Ashley Tier is joining us today and Ashley Tier is a spiritual medium and a clinical hypnotherapist. Ashley, you're very welcome to the show. Hey, yeah. Uh, yes, thank you so much for having me on have me on Joanne I'm really excited and just really important topics that I know need to be discussed and information that needs to get out there so very important stuff brilliant 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 and it's interesting actually because I was just having a quick look through your profile and we've met a couple of times in Pat's Sana Network and on the Your Holistic Academy we'll touch on them as well maybe later on um but I've been looking through some of your work and what you've been doing and it really resonates with where my passions lie. So tell us a little bit about who you are, Ashley, and what it is that you really care about, what, what your work involves, and what it is that you really are really passionate about and what you care about. Okay, so my main thing is about if I have knowledge or, or information that I feel would be beneficial to other people, I'm all about getting that out there because I've spent a lot of years on personal development the spiritual aspect, um, really alchemizing my emotions and getting my working on myself, healing myself. And through those extensive years of, of work, I have really found some amazing life advice, some gems, some things that when I learned it, I thought, wow, you know, I wish other people knew this. So I'm on a bit of a mission now just to do simply that for no other reason other than getting that information out there because it's crucial, especially about the mind subconscious mind heart affects you and, and, and children also so brilliant fantastic. and when was your turning point Ashley did something happen or you know when, when was it that you got to see how important this information is and how we have the power over our mind at what point in your life did you actually realize that multiple I'd say the first you know it's kind of like those wow moments and then as I progressed through the years another wow moment progressed through the years and it's kind of like it went in layers yeah. but I think really the first one was when I was went through a lot of um, very traumatic uh, childhood and also very uh, destructive relationships and I was in group counseling for women's aid and there was something there was uh, see I'm very interested in psychology but not that I knew until that point and there was a very interesting concept called Jahari's window and that was basically saying how like you had to write down how you are in the world how you feel in the world and then you had to write down how other people view you in the world and then there was like four different windows and it's like what you, you know what you know um, you don't know what others views of you and it was all this uh, all these concepts were and then there was like your blind spots and it was like take an inventory of your mind and and your emotions and I've never done that and I just thought that is really interesting because mm. it gives you a bit of space after you react you know if, if you just react I was very explosive very reactive through that I just didn't know any other way that's how I lived my life and that gave me a bit of space a bit of pause go oh wait a minute right oh so I'm reacting this way and I'm jealous and I'm twisted and I'm bitter and I'm angry at my father and how I was raised and all this and I was like right okay it was a bit it's about taking responsibility and going right now what can I do about this and one of the main things there John was meditation meditation really really helped me but that was where it first started I've had a lot I've had lots of those moments really and you know you mentioned there um about your view of life and and then how other people see you and I'm really lit up there by your explanation of it because I discovered that for myself as well because there is reality, but then we each have our own individual realities and that's our truth, that's who we are and that's how the world is for us. But there's different perspectives and those perspectives or view of life or filters as some people call them are different for everybody. And that usually comes back to something that happened in our life and you were talking about trauma so can you explain to us a little bit about maybe trauma or things that happen in our life and how that sets us up for who we are in the future? Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. I'll use me for, as an example. Uh, my father left when I was three years old. He went and raised another step family. My mother has rapid cycle bipolar, quite a you know, debilitating mental illness, and she would cry nonstop 
of for for years. I'm not exaggerating by saying she would she was so devastated by my father leaving. She would cry. Now what the heart that affected me was it numbed me out. I I was so used to seeing this that it kind of as a self preservation sort of mechanism, I, I would be quite numb then to my emotions and, and she would say about her all men were bad and you can't trust men and that caused me to not be very trustworthy in relationships because, you know, and, and, and I've had all this bitterness and jealousy and my dad raised in another family and we're neglected and uh, just bitter, twisted, jealous. I couldn't, I, couldn't, um, I couldn't see past that. It was reactive emotions because I'd been numb to, uh, just numbed out generally my emotions, you know, the love inside, and I found it very hard to trust. So, you know, I will take responsibility. I wouldn't say I was a perfect angel in my relationships. I was very distrustful and jealous and twisted, but definitely whoever I got paired and matched with, whoever I drew to me, uh, and how I allowed myself to be treated also was, was, was like two wrongs did not make a right. In fact, it made an explosion. It was awful. And... <laughs> have enough respect for myself to think that I deserved any better so whatever way I was treated even though the alarm bells your intuition still there going oh my this is not right this is wrong didn't care self-destruct mode but mm. that's how I think it's maybe more of an extreme how that can affect people and it's taken a lot of years of work to unravel that and really look at that but it can be done and, and what I heard there, um, Ashley, is you spoke about your feelings been numbed. And I think so many people in the world have that experience, but don't actually realize it. But part of that is it's a protective mechanism um, to keep us safe from all that hurt and trauma and overwhelm or whatever it is. But in doing that, we're also blocking out any goodness that can come to us, any love. And um, so I think it's really profound that we really get that, that, you know, we say, we're going to ignore this person or whatever. Um, but really, you know, when we have this awareness of what's actually happening on a neurological level on, in the amygdala, in this emotional brain center, you know, that it's, it's not just switching off the bad stuff, it's switching off anything that's possible, even the good. So I think that's a really interesting um, uh, thing that you mentioned about numbing, numbing the feelings. You, I, I had a look through your Facebook page and there was a really interesting quote that you had up there by Teal Swan. I really loved it. It really resonated with me. And it said, so many adults are just very large children who are never seen and heard and felt understood and allowed and enabled to be. And that was Teal Swan. And Teal Swan was probably one of my first introductions in the whole world of, of spirituality, really having a look at who I am in this world and what it is to be human. And I read her book, it's called Shadows Before Dawn. That was the, that was the very first book. And I found it profound. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, adults that we still have that little child inside of us bursting to get out. And when we're reacting, as you say, um, it's usually that child self kind of coming out that we don't really know. We've no control over it. We don't know what's going on. It's just that rebellious child inside us. Can you talk a little bit about that and how the amygdala is is working, the workings of that, how that's all how that's all panning out? Absolutely. And th there is some wee elements that I notice about again. I've just used myself an ex as an example because there's and I think if anybody sat down and really took stock and really noticed. Uh, who they are and how they react for you know using me as an example I have through my childhood there, there's different aspects and different facets to my personality some are beneficial some are not so one would be numbed out cut off my needs but another side to me would be very proactive do 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 go 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 perfectionist I will make sure it's right so I'm not getting any negative criticism and that this side has actually been a bit of a benefit in my life business so if I want to get stuff done I'll do it really well and then there's the also like a really um like neglected child part a bit like the part that you're speaking of mm. and they're all different sides and everybody like there's certain sides that my best friend will see that nobody else will see there's there's a certain like even the way I'm dressed how I am here this is not how I am in the house this is my professional self and that's okay but believe me I have a real goofy side and I work in a nursery school with children and I tell you what I mean the, even the other teachers and stuff they laugh at me I am on those scooters I am I am hiding with them like a big Egypt but I don't care 
there's something to me that I actually realized from a higher perspective is that because I never got that childhood, like I was cooking, cleaning, doing the finances, helping my mum, which couldn't do any of this. I was the, as the youngest, I took on this role, very, very responsible. And it was a very big weight on my shoulders. It didn't have the childhood, teenage years. It was just an absolute nightmare. Nothing go into it much. But there's a part of me that looks at me now as, as an adult running around with these children, having the best time. And I tell you what, there's not one thought of worry in my mind. And I, the way the universe conspired at the time when I got into working with children, and this might sound, well, it sounds odd now to me. It's about how, how, how much I've changed. I, I didn't, not that I didn't like children. I, I, I didn't know how to interact with them. I wasn't working at said time, must be about eight to 10 years ago. And I got offered a job, offered a job in childcare. And I went, oh, no, I don't know if I could, you know, I don't know how to handle kids. And then I went, look, you've been offered a job. Either you take it or you don't, you know. And I went, oh, right, okay, rolling my eyes. And I found that I absolutely loved it. So from there, and then, but I can see that to me, that's a bit like the universe had my back. That was my next step. And to see how much I loved it, but that's me. I'm living my childhood a bit, how odd as that sounds. And there's certain little things that I noticed, uh, Joanne, about there's some special needs children and they have some, some sensory issues and they have to have like weighted toys or they have to have a blanket or they have to have a fidget They're sensory. And I will notice, particularly with myself, and this is about like heart ties in with the Teal Swan quote, I will come in and I, I don't have a blanket when I sit on my sofa. I have a duvet and this duvet is wrapped around me. I have it tucked in and I'm sitting there like this. <laughs> but I don't care. I love that comfort. I love that around me. And I look at this. See, I then I psychoanalyze myself all the time and I look at myself doing this and go, yeah, you never got that in charity, did you? Nice and I, and I, the time for it's like a permanent hug. Love us. Because I recognize it in the children. I recognize it in myself. And it is about those different layers to the mind. That's sort of a subconscious thing that I do. But the more awareness you have, the more you begin to recognize these things, not only in yourself and other people. So it's very, very interesting. I have it all going on, going, oh, you're doing this because of that and blah, blah, blah. But sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's really incredible. And I think children, um, children are just, you know, they've no, um, they're just carefree and they have fun. And and, and that's what I really, what I really cherish, cherish about children and childhood and allowing them to be, you know, allowing them to be as a child because, you know, there's like nowadays just too many restrictions and telling them what to do and not allowing them to be creative and be themselves basically. And that's a massive, massive part of development in, you know, who they're going to be when they grow up and not conforming. Like they have, you know, so many children are conforming to things and, you know, it's blocking off that whole creativity. And um, I think that's a massive part of, you know, if we were aware of that, um, you know, we could provide so much more. And look, parents, parents love their children. Many, most parents do. <laughs> you know, they, they, they love their children and they want the best for their children, but they don't necessarily are, they're not necessarily aware of, you know, how a child grows and develops and how influential they are over their children. So, you know, for many parents, we can't tell them what to do necessarily. It's, it's from our behavior. So we have to walk the talk as well. So can you talk a little bit about that, about how parents and parents as role models and how we influence our children and why that's such a massive, massive part of the development, allowing them to be creative and to be, and to be their best version of themselves when they grow up? Uh, absolutely. And I, I feel like the schooling system does need to change a bit. I suppose it could just be with how you teach, but it's more about, you know, you can teach children to multiply this and memorize that, but whenever they become an adult, where's the life skill? Where is the, now, for example, if, if we had like a certain sum, okay, problem solved, well, what way could you do it? And, and just, it's more about gentle coaching and coaxing. And so they need to try and do it. Independence is a big thing, but also that creative mind, <clears throat> excuse me, that is the most important. That is going to be the most beneficial. And I feel like maybe the way this in general, not just my particular where I work, like everywhere, it needs to be more about uh, involving that creative mind because that is the mind that's going to help you in the future. And you know what? 
children see adults as gods and i know that might sound odd but they take because they're in the subconscious mind which is pure purely literal i'll even a quick example again for me i remember when my dad when i was younger about five years old um i was putting my head under uh the duvet and he said you know you, you if you do that you will suffocate and die right you know just trying to get me to stop doing it mm. i took that i was absolutely horrified why would they make something so unsafe uh, you know uh, bedroom and I was really scared to go asleep and but that's just a point like you can say things and I know we all have examples ourselves if you say something to your child they're most like they're going to take that right in so literal so and it's this other thing about there was different things about where you're raising your children what I would say about that is a child can never have enough love it can never have enough an, enough nurturing it can never have enough comfort never skin to skin is so important i know we know all this now um but i'll use my particular nursery as an example we were very much going in and we changed to become it's called a, a nurturing uh environment and that was more about you know you know children could stroke themselves there's a wonderful thing called havening and you could teach them maybe things like that you know and it's all about them being able to regulate themselves and regulate their emotions or if they really needed it if they're a toddler and that you can calm them down and how this is all positive and then obviously now this whole this whole covid nightmare has happened <laughs> and i just I, I am concerned and that's why i'm putting on free classes you know in my school in particular for parents to come in because between the ages of zero seven your children are so impressionable they are that's them being imprinted for life and I don't want to scare parents per se, because it's a lot of responsibility, but the awareness part will, will just prove so crucial for your child going up to be a well-rounded, emotionally balanced child. You know, that's the emotional aspect hasn't really been looked at in schools. I saw that it was going in that direction, but then with all this, it's like a back step, to be honest, I feel, and it's all about working to get that sorted and moved in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, children, they they really are they're like sponges they and and so their brain waves are just so different even for for taking in and i think it's part of the universe um you know uh for children that's how they learn for the first seven years as i say they're they're really impressionable as you say so it's a really important time a very a very very important time around that time um and you're right when you're talking about when they're in the schools and you know they're learning geography and history and all of this but they're not learning any life skills they're not learning to you know and it's all the same information that everyone's been given, you know, facts and figures and all of this, but they're not been taught, you know, who they are, what, what do they like better, you know, what, you know, what is they enjoy, whereas they've been told to go out and um, get a job, you know, work really hard and save hard. And, 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 and that same message has been given out there. And they're not really been encouraged to be creative and have a look at who they are and what it is that they really enjoy for themselves and to do something for themselves rather than you know, because their parents expect them to, their parents may expect them to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, or following their footsteps. So really allowing that child to unleash who they are in the world, you know, so that's what I'm really, and, and with the school system, I think it's really fallen down in that area. Um, and then you were talking about um, this epidemic that's going on at the moment, and you're talking about touch. And I don't know, you're prob you probably know about the work in the Heart, uh, the Heart My Institute, um, and how powerful the heart is and that bonding and the, the oxytocin, you know, that the hormone that's released for hugging and the 10 second hug and, you know, how that is so impactful for children. But now with all these restrictions coming in, I was in the shopping center there just was it yesterday before and every single shop you have to go into, you have to sanitize, you have to, there's an in way, there's an out way, you have to follow the arrows on the, on the ground and there's people at the front only allowing a certain number into the shop. So, this is all, we're all conforming to all these rules, if you like, and our power has kind of been taken away. And um, I know, look, there's a safety aspect of that in terms of physical, not getting this, this virus or whatever, but it's actually suppressing our immune system as well, because you know what, you know the saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. So the immune system is, um, you know, been suppressed. it's not been allowed to, it's it's been it's taken a break basically all this hand sanitizer and all the rest so it's not it's 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 cutting down on that resilience of the immune system um 
And I'm really, and, and you know, with the kids in schools, and I don't know how the kids are going to manage, because kids can't do social distancing. Kids need to be touched and all of this. And then, you know, what's going on in the, the child care services, the nurseries and all that kind of thing? Because I know my sister has a young daughter and she's tearing her hair and she's not allowed, she has to leave her blanket there and her suit there overnight. And like kids need that for when they're sleeping at night time. So can you talk a little bit about that and how that's impacting our children and parents as well? Yeah, and I think I'll start off with the first aspect, and I will we'll definitely dive into that, is 90 to 95% of adults that come to me with panic attacks and social anxiety disorder, when I regress them back, it's first day at school. First day. At nine times out of ten, more than nine times out of ten. And I just can't believe it near enough every time. I goosebumps when you said that. Yeah, that's incredible. And it's like, because the trauma of your child being so bonded to you, loving you, you're going into this strange environment, mm -hmm. people you don't know, that child is not old enough, it hasn't developed logic and reason to understand what's going on. It's fear, it's abandonment, it's trauma. And that's uh, that's why I spoke to my principal and my vice principal, look, we really need, because obviously, because I've learned that information, I would like to get that information out there about how current and nurturing we can be. So that's the number one thing. Now, on to all these rules and restrictions, I'll actually give you a quick example. I was speaking to a teacher the other day before we stopped for summer, and she was very, very fearful, very fearful. She would literally shake. No, you have to come in and do your job, but if you're holding that much fear, it's not good. The children will pick up on your vibes big time. So, yeah. you know, just discussing things with her. I had some good chats and I was, you know, trying to, not trying to influence her, but giving her different perspectives to sort of work with. And she was really receptive. And this had went on for a few weeks, her being so fearful because she's young children as well. She doesn't want to catch anything and bring it home and all that. Yeah. And she's been doing these, these restrictions and social distancing and bubbles and all this really, really stringently with her own children. And she told me a story the other day before we left and she said, you know what, I think there's something in what you're saying because my child, I think her child was four or five, social distancing, we're able to have nine other household over, which was the cousins and they were playing out in the, in the garden on the tree, social distancing, it was all great, blah, blah, blah. And she said right at the very end, so they came back and they, I said, oh, did you just have a good time playing? You know, social distancing, you were great at it. And he says, yeah, everything was brilliant, but the best part was having secret hugs in the garage. Go <laughs> away. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. <laughs> this was like, that was it. I just went, I can't, I can't do this because... It's not natural. They just need it. She, for her, she was just there. I'm being the best parent, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing this. But that, for her, was her her example that really turned it for her i'm glad she got that herself because it from the mouth of babes they just it, it's so you're exactly right it's so unnatural and again you know stand here there's stickers here go in wash your hands it's all me as an adult it's it's very eerie yeah. it's very bizarre it's very twilight so it's not a healthy atmosphere but I know the only thing I can say and the only great thing I can say is I work in a fantastic school. I work with amazing people, uh, principal, et cetera, vice principal, and we are a nurturing school and we are going to, I know for a fact we're going to be looking after these children, but I can't say that everywhere. Yeah. I don't mean that to, to scare anybody, but if I was a parent, I would really want you to have a chat with, with, with your teachers or your principal or just to make sure your children are getting the psychological care because believe me, this pandemic is nothing compared to this wave of, of children. We are reason for the future. Yeah. This is, our eyes need to be on this, not over there. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing as well, you know, the, the, all these restrictions and rules and everything, it's obviously to slow down the spread of this, this virus or whatever. But in doing that, it's having a massive impact on our mental health. So whatever about this, the physical part of the health, but the mental, and I think... In my opinion, that's been way overlooked. And we have a mental health crisis at the moment, never mind this on top of it. And then you're talking about our children and parents who have kids, they're going through all this fear and anxiety, and that alone suppresses the immune system. So 
Um, so yeah, I think you know all the information, the advice that you were given there, and have a chat with your teacher and and really be on the same page as your teacher and work something out together. Um, we don't know what the future stores uh, for us in the future, but um, but once we're aware of what's going on and what we can do, and giving ourselves power and not um, you know re really having to think and asking you know what can I do or you know, to make this better, just ask ourselves rather than conforming all the time to things, because we have a lot of power that we're just giving it away all the time. Um, actually, there was something else just to finish up. We're nearly coming to the end. Um, you done another, it was on a video that you gave, and it was about, um, it was Frederick, some of the other, I can't, I can't even pronounce his second name, it's a, Dutch, a German name, I think. If you Frederick. must, what's his name? Do you know who I'm talking about? Frederick Nietzsche. Yeah, that's it. I love this quote, love it. And I think it sums up everything that we're talking about today. You must be willing to burn yourself with your own flame. So to me, that says, you know, there is hope. And, you know, we have our cup filled up from all our past experiences. And if we can empty that cup out and relearn um, and give ourselves power. So basically burning away the old and transforming into the new. Um, is there anything else that you want to add to that, Aran? Because that's a very powerful quote that you that you gave. Well, I know, like I do a lot of um, psychology research and a lot of philosophy, just because I enjoy it. I might sound strange, but there's such nuggets and gems and life advice there. And that was the quote, you know, you must be willing to burn yourself with your own flames. How else are you supposed to rise anew? And that really is about, I would even put that in as the light of your own consciousness. The... <sighs> The best change work you will get is there's just, I'm such a big advocate of personal responsibility. Yeah. If, if you can move out, like one of my personal, uh, I say them every morning, morning affirmations is I step out of victimhood into creatorship. I'm not a victim anymore. In whatever way I viewed myself, when you take the power to take control, whether that be to seek additional help, to, to speak to friends, to look at yourself. In fact, really quickly, like I've put together, an, an I'm not just saying that, that sounds terrible, an amazing <laughs> online course that is just all about you becoming an, uh, a more actualized person from the yeah. bottom up. There's a lot yes. of work that goes into it. And there's also the spiritual aspect, because I believe we can't, on this pie chart of life, we can't uh, neglect any physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all of them. And obviously the health that you're a big advocate of, Joanne, as well. But mm -hmm. I think that, that that's it, really. It's just about, you know, looking at ourselves. And if you need help or support, you know, just seek it. We'll find somebody near you. Do some research. Because I think in these times, a lot of people will be seeking a bit of help or do a bit, do a bit of research. Listen to podcasts and things like this. Because mm -hmm. there might be just something there that you just needed to hear. Yeah, just one little thing. And I think, yeah, you're right. Ask for help and you know, because there are so many people out there that are willing to help. And as human beings, that's something that we like to do. We like to contribute, you know. And um, so I think, you know, if you, if you feel you need help or, and there's, there's no such thing as a stupid question. So, um, so ask, just keep asking, even asking yourself, just ask yourself because your mind is always searching for the answer and it will pop up at some stage. You know, your subconscious mind is just unbelievable. It really is. Um, so Ashley, you're working with the Holistic Academy as well at the moment. So your courses are there. Where else are your courses? Where else can people find you? Well, perfectionist control freak right here. I've had my web designer absolutely tortured. So <laughs> we went live yesterday. So that is Ashley Tear. Oh, I need to remember that. Ashley Tear Spiritual Medium uh, Hypnotherapy dot com i hope i got that right but that's just there's the course and all sorts of different services that i offer i will be working with your holistic academy i'm going to be teaming up and doing some things personal development spirituality and teaming up with wonderful people as well like yourself joanne it's been brilliant. fantastic so brilliant, brilliant. i'm going to get all those details from you and put them in the show notes as well all those places where people can get you because i think it's really really important and and ashley does have a youtube channel as well so i really encourage you to what's the name of your youtube channel Sovereign Spirit. Yeah, okay. So people, there's really great, great videos and they're great insights, great wisdom. So I really encourage you to, to look that out and be responsible for your life as well and take back your power. So thank you very much, Ashley. I really thoroughly enjoyed. I knew this was going to be a super interesting conversation. So thank you very much, Ashley, and we will talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you so much.